us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered, and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me the psalm on the screen. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There they are the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sister of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. 
A reading from Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs>
our gratitude to our readers this morning. Thank you. It's always a confusing and invigorating thing to have the gospel read in various languages at the same time. 50 days, it's been 50 days since Easter, 50 days from Easter to Pentecost. And what a journey it has been for us. You and I have kind of been in on the secret. The secret being that the Spirit, the Comforter, has already come, has already been here. But you and I are in on that. Those who walked that first trail, those who walked that first time, they didn't know that. They only knew there was a promise. The coming of the Holy Spirit is a significant time and a significant event in the life of the world. Not simply the church, but the life of the world. And so here we are today, we've come to celebrate it, and we often do that with music. Have you ever noticed that the music that we sing about the Holy Spirit has to do with uh, what's well, usually rather, rather sedate. It's kind of easy going, the easy listening side of religious music. There's this wonderful, wonderful hymn, one of the earliest hymns ever written. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire enlightened with celestial fire. If you've ever been to an ordination in the Episcopal Church, there's all of this verbiage and singing and everything that takes place, and then at this one point, the ordinand is, is kneeling in front of the bishop. And at the end of saying one thing, it gets deathly quiet. Everyone anticipating what's happening thinks that it is the longest silence ever. And then the bishop intones the simple tune and sings, Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Enlightened with celestial fire. And then at the end of it, there's silence again. We're waiting, waiting. We want the Holy Spirit there. That's what will make this the holy event that we seek. It all fits, this, this uh, easy listening side of the music. It all fits with our gospel for today when at the end of the day of the resurrection, Jesus shows up to the frightened disciples and he says, be easy. The Holy Spirit is with you and will go with you. I want to suggest to us today that as nice as that is, and as comforting as that is, that perhaps the scripture from the book of Acts that we read this morning perhaps gives us a bit more insight into the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I want to suggest that there are two things about that. First, I would like to point out that when you read this reading from Acts, you read how this was not a homogenous, a homogenous group. This was not a group that had been filtered down to its basic essence, where everyone was similar, if not alike, if every skin color was the same, every, every language was the same. That's not it at all. The people who gathered on that day were as diverse a group of people as it could almost be. There, there could have been more diversity, but not, this was not just your plain, 
Oh, just everybody who lives in the same neighborhood and does the same thing and leaves at the same time every morning and comes home at the same time. No. This was diversity inhabited in that place. And it was to this diverse group that the Holy Spirit came. The whole diverse group. Which leads me to think that in a diverse place, in a diverse world, where we have diverse cultures and diverse language and diverse everything else, that may be the place where we can first begin to understand each other. It's when we invite into our lives a deeper experience and understanding of the Holy Spirit. It brought understanding to them. They, they didn't speak the same language, but they understood. So maybe you and I need to find a way to invite into our lives a deeper experience of the Holy Spirit. The Comforter. But I, I think that if we do that, we need to be aware of the second thing I want to bring up this morning. And it's this, the arrival of the Holy Spirit was not a single feather dancing down from heaven. It was in the sound of a wind. What kind of wind was it? A violent wind. A violent and the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives in whatever way that happens is something that shakes us to the core. It's violent in the way it arrives. It's violent in how it treats us. It's violent in what it does to us. So if you and I truly want to grow in the gifts that God gives us through the Holy Spirit, we need to be prepared for the understanding that what we're about to do is dangerous. It is dangerous. Yesterday, we celebrated uh, in our feast days the martyrs of Uganda. The martyrs of Uganda were 45 men, 23 Anglicans, and 22 Roman Catholics who over the period of two years in the mid-1880s were burned to death in Uganda because they had converted to Christianity. They did so in danger. The Holy Spirit, the experience of God's Spirit in our lives is a danger so if you and I want to deepen our relationship we need to be aware of this we are going into dangerous territory one of the ways we, that it's really dangerous is that when it happens we lose control we lose control to God and what you and I think may be the best thing in the world the best thing we should do we may find out is not what we're going to do. The other part of this that's dangerous is not only these things, but the fact that if we deepen our relationship with God through the Holy Spirit, we are going to be asked to do something. The coming of the Comforter into our lives is not to make us comfortable. We need the Comforter to get through the dangerous stuff. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, enlighten with celestial fire. 
going to be asked to do something. It, it may not be to be a martyr, but it may be to stand up for a victim somewhere. It may be to try to help someone be understood who people don't want to understand. It may be to embrace someone that others think is un unlovable. But we can do it. And we can do it because of God's Spirit in our lives. This danger prevails. But God is with us through it all. I, uh, I've come to believe that if we want to musically represent the Holy Spirit, what we have is fine in part, but we also should do some good spiritual music in the style of heavy metal. <laughs> and we should do that because it makes us uncomfortable. It shakes us. <laughs> so, next week, We're going to do an ACDC mass. <laughs> I know some of you would like that, and I know who you are. But to know, to know that the Spirit shakes us, makes us, and recreates us is an essential part of our belief in the Holy Spirit and of God. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Enlighten with perpetual fire. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please pray with me our prayer for raising hope. Holy One of Blessing, you are pure love and give us all that we have. 
Help us at Iona Hope to see your love in the world. Give us the vision to see how we may give your loving gifts to our neighbors and to discern the ministries and facilities that we need to accomplish this. Raise in us the hope that comes from our life in you, that we may be your hands and feet in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers to your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light and perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Ray, Susie, and for all of our retired clergy, we pray also for St. Luke's, St. Margaret of Scotland, St. Mark's, St. Martin's. We pray for Donald, our president, Rick, our governor, Randall, our mayor, and the Lee County commissioners. We pray for the ministries at Iona Hope, especially the Altar Guild, we offer our thanksgivings for the many blessings of this day, for our guests and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for Christians, Muslims, and Jews, and all people of faith throughout the world who are suffering persecution for their beliefs. We pray for all who work for peace, especially those who give their lives that it may grow. We pray for all victims of terrorism and violence and for refugees. We pray for those who are committed to our daily prayers, especially Bruce, Andrew, Mary Ann, Donna, Joan, Boyd, Everett, Rhonda, Bob, Bob, Richard, Gordon, William, Len, Patrick, Miranda, and Donna. In our congregation, we pray for the Kraft family the Craver family, the Crawford family, the Creech family, the Crowley family, and the Cummins family. We also pray for our pets, especially Jay, Bear, Roger, Toppy, Margaret, and Tigger. Are there others for whom we should pray and blessings for which we give thanks? Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
fed the multitudes by the lakeside by blessing the gifts of a few people. <clears throat> bless these gifts to the feeding of the needy, and bless us in your service, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs> gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, do you be honored, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
Now, in joyful thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received, let us pray together, saying, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.